In this video, we will talk about how to solve problem 8.45. In this problem, we are asked to find the voltage with respect to time and the current with respect to time for any time t greater than zero. And here is our circuit. We have a current source. This current source is given by 1 plus 5 U of t amps. And so before t equals zero, it will be a 1 amp source. And right at t equals zero, it will switch from being a 1 amp source to a 6 amp source, just adding that extra 5. And in parallel with that, we have a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. 2 ohms, 0.5 farads, and 1 henry. Our voltage reference is the voltage across the capacitor, of course, that could be the voltage across any of the components. All of them are in parallel. And our current reference we're looking for is the current through the one Henry inductor. And so just like all the other problems that we've been looking at, what we want to do is we want to find our initial conditions, our steady state conditions, and we can use those values to help us find the general form solution. So in this case, at t equals zero minus, this is what the circuit is behaving like just before the added five amps comes out of the current source. We have a one amp source, we have our two ohm resistor, our capacitor is behaving like an open circuit, and our inductor is behaving like a short. And so here we have our initial condition. Since this is shorted, that means we have no voltage drop across any of the branches. And so therefore with no voltage drop, V0 is going to equal zero volts. And because this is shorted, all of the current from the current supply will go through this shorted branch. So I0 is one amp. And as we know, the inductor will maintain this current immediately after T equals zero. So T equals zero plus, that current will be maintained and that voltage will be maintained across the capacitor. So here we'll take a look at what's happening at T equals zero plus. Now the current source has ramped up to a six amp source, just immediately jumped from one amp to six amps. We still have this 2 ohm resistor here, we have the capacitor back in play, and we have the inductor here. And so now we want to figure out, okay, what is our voltage going to be? Well, as we know, the voltage is not going to change across a capacitor instantaneously, so that's still going to be 0 volts. Our I0, our current, is still going to be 1 amp through here. Now the major difference you might ask is, well, what is the effect of this six amp current source? Well, we still have zero volts here, so there's no current still flowing through this two ohm resistor. Why is that? Well, we still have zero volts. Zero volts divided by two ohms still gives us zero amps. We still have one amp going through the inductor, so where does the additional current go? All of it goes through the capacitor. The capacitor can have an instantaneous stepwise current change. It cannot have an instantaneous stepwise voltage change. So the initial current through the capacitor is going to be five amps. That will be very important. We will use that later on when we're trying to solve for one of the derivatives. At steady state, this is what's happening as T goes to infinity. The capacitor again behaves like an open circuit. Inductor behaves like a short. And so we have six amps. Here's our two ohms. We have an open circuit, so no current's going through there. All of that current is going to go through the inductor. So our I at infinity is going to equal six amps. So that is our steady state current. And then we have our steady state voltage is going to be zero volts. So we can analyze this using Kirchhoff's current law at the top node. We're going to do that actually a couple different ways. In this way, we're going to get everything in terms of voltage so that we can solve for our V of T. And so here we've got our constant six amps of current coming in from the source. The current through the two ohm resistor is going to be V over two ohms. That's going to go downward, so we have minus V over two ohms. Our current through an inductor is going to be C dV dT. And so that's going to go downward. So we have minus C, which was 0.5 farads, dV dt. And then we want to figure out the current through the inductor. Now, if you remember, V equals L dI dt. And so we can do this integral. 
um, which is going to be 1 over L integral from 0 to T of V of tau d tau, that's going to figure out our inductor current. And so the inductor current is going to be going downward, and so this is our replacement for I. Now in order to get that differential equation into a form that we can solve, we want to take the derivative of that, taking the derivative of a constant 6, that just goes away to 0. Taking the derivative here, we end up with minus 1 half dV dt. Taking the derivative here, we end up with minus 1 half second derivative of V with respect to T. And then taking the derivative here, that allows us to get rid of the integral and just go to V. So we have minus V right here. Now we get this into our standard form and we do a Laplace transform on that, we get s squared plus s plus 2 equals 0. Solving for our s value, we get s equals negative 1 half plus or minus j root 7. This root 7 should be divided by 2, so that's one mistake that I made in the solution that I posted. And so what that means is our alpha is 1 half and our omega d is root 7 over 2. And that tells us that we have an underdamped circuit because whenever we see that we have complex values in there, our J showed up, so that means we are underdamped. And so the general form for an underdamped circuit looking at the voltage is going to be V of T equals V steady state. That's going to come from our V at infinity, which we found previously was 0 volts, plus A1 cosine omega DT, and our omega D is this root 7 over 2 plus A2 sine omega dt, so we plug in omega d there, times this whole quantity times e to the negative alpha times t, and our alpha coming in here is 1 half. And so we can plug that in, get our VSS out of there since that's zero, and plug in our omega d values and our alpha values, and you see the general form solution for V of t. The only thing left to find is our A1 and our A2. And so to do that, we're going to start out by plugging in t equals zero. We're going to look on the zero plus side and see what happens right at t equals zero on the plus side. And so we plug in zero into the cosine right here. This is square root of seven over two times t is going to go to zero. Square root of seven over two times t is going to go to zero. So cosine of zero becomes one. Sine of zero becomes zero e to the zero becomes one, so this whole thing simplifies down to just a one. We know that v of zero was zero volts. We already solved for that back up here. So we had zero volts right there. And so we have zero volts equals a one. And so in this whole expression for v of t, what that means is the a one coefficient is going to zero, the cosine term goes away. Now we need to take the derivative of V with respect to T and go about solving that at T equals zero so we can hopefully solve for A2. Now I could have gone back to this and, and greatly simplified this and taken out the entire A1 cosine omega dt term before I took the derivative because we know that A1 is zero, but I went and did this in the general form so dv dt is going to be negative a1 omega d sine of omega dt. That's because the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine. So we get the negative out front, sine omega dt, um, and then of course we multiply by wd, the derivative of what's inside of here. So we get negative a1 omega d sine of omega dt plus the derivative of what's right here. That's just going to be a2 cosine of omega dt um, times omega d, of course. And so that is the derivative of what's inside of here times what's outside, e to the negative alpha of t, minus, let's do the derivative of what's over here, negative alpha e to the negative alpha of t times what's inside of there. Now we plug in what we know. We know that A1 is zero, so this whole term is gonna go away. This term is gonna go away, and we plug in T equals zero. So what that means is our cosine here is gonna go to one. So inside of this whole first bracket, this term went away because A1 was zero. 
This gets condensed down just to one, so we get omega d a two, and then e to the zero becomes a one. This becomes e to the zero, so that becomes a one, and so then we end up with minus alpha times, oh, a one was zero, so that goes away. Sine of zero was zero, so that goes away. This whole second line all goes to zero, so all we end up with is omega d times a two. So omega d times a2 is equal to the derivative of v with respect to t at 0 plus. So we go ahead and we look for that. Going back to the capacitor current at 0 plus, we remember that i equals c dv dt. And so the current through the capacitor at 0 plus we found was 5 amps. That's where all that extra current went when that current source turned on through the capacitor. So 5 amps equals C dV dt at zero plus. So therefore, here's my second mistake in this solution. This should be 10 over here. So dV dt at zero plus, that is 10 volts per second. Um, I got that right down here somehow. Must have been late, forgot to change that. That should be 10. So down here I've got square root of seven over two, A2 equals 10, A2 is 20 over square root of seven. So this is correct. Ignore the fact that this says 12, it is 10. Okay, so now I plug this into the general form solution. Remember VSS went away to zero, A1 went away to zero, so all we're left with is V of T is equal to 20 over root seven sine of root seven over two T E to the negative T over two. And if you approximate that, just plugging in 20 over root seven, that gets you 7.559, and if you do root 7 over 2, this is what you get, 1.323t e to the negative t over 2. Now, what we want to do is we want to use this expression for v of t, and we want to apply Kirchhoff's current law so that we can solve for i. And so we can see if we go back to our circuit that we had originally, let's remind ourselves of what this circuit looks like. If we're doing Kirchhoff's current law, we have the current from the source, we have the current through the resistor, current through the capacitor, current through the inductor. So let's go back down and do the math now that we know what the voltage is. So the current through the source minus the current through the resistor. Current through the source is going to go upward, current through the resistor downward, minus current through the capacitor downward, minus current through the inductor downward. Well, what is the expression for the source? It's at this point just going to be 6 amps. It's going to be 6 amps for anything zero or greater. The current through the resistor is just given by Ohm's law since everything's in parallel there. It's got the same voltage as the capacitor, same V of T, so that's just gonna be V of T divided by two. Our current through the capacitor is given by C dV dt, so we can take the derivative of this V of T and divide that, or multiply that rather, by the capacitor value and we can get that and then the inductor current that's just going to be i of t that's ultimately what we're looking for all of that by kirchhoff's current law has to equal zero amps so let's go ahead and plug that in i'm going to rearrange and put i of t on the outside equals six amps minus v of t over two minus c dv dt so here i've got i of t equals six amps I'm going to go ahead and plug in my V of T and divide that by 2. So I've already taken care of dividing this by 2. Remember V of T was 20 over root 7 sine of root 7 over 2T e to the negative T over 2. So this is going to be my current through the resistor. Now I've got minus C. So C was a 0.5 farad capacitor. And then inside of here I'm going to take the derivative of that expression. And so this is going to be just what was on the left side, 20 square root of seven sine of square root of seven over two t. And then this is the derivative of my decaying exponential, minus one half e to the negative t over two, plus the derivative of what I had on the left multiplied by what's on the right. So I end up with what was on the right before is just e to the negative two t and then I get a 20 over root seven times the derivative in here, derivative of sine is gonna be cosine of square root of seven over two times t, and of course, I have to multiply by the omega d in here in the front. So this is going to be my i of t.
And now as I start putting together these terms, I actually have a little bit of a, a sign mistake down here. So this minus should have carried on down to here. And then as it turns out coming through in here, this is the plus. And so I should have, this should actually be a minus right here as well. So it should be six amps minus five. So I ended up with minus 10 plus five. These end up being the same. Um, and then over here, I end up with a minus five. So after all of this, I ended up with minus 0.5 times 20. So that's going to be minus 10 over square root of seven times square root of seven divided by two. Ultimately, it just ends up being minus five cosine of square root of seven over two t e to the negative t over two. Um, so once we simplify this on down, this should be again a minus right here. This should also be a minus right here in the final solution. And so we get six amps minus 1.8898 sine of, and then the rest is correct. Um, so just make sure you watch those sign changes. And this is how you can solve for your I of T.